What's Wiggle and Wire Nerdishers? It's your boy, Mr. CEO, Big Daddy Shea Muma of this beautiful, awesome, fantastic technology YouTube channel that is Wire Nerdish. And guys, this is my review of the BlackBerry Key 2 LE. Ooh. Wear notice on the baddest beat. Met a lot of people, but still don't know defeat. Running for the White House, but I am no athlete. Got Jordans on my feet and haters in retreat. Wait, I am the CEO. Competition robotic, call him C3PO. So the BlackBerry Key 2 LE is the cheaper version of the brand's flagship Key 2 Android smartphone. Unveiled in late August 2018 and finally made available for purchase here in the US just a week or so ago, the Key 2 LE is certainly a modern device. Yet, what sets it apart from other Android phones is its iconic BlackBerry-style keyboard, something that's hard to come by in the era of touchscreen smartphones with bigger and bigger screens that don't permit wasting real estate on bezels, let alone a full physical keyboard. So let's talk about that. The keyboard is in a QWERTY layout, with most of the keys being equal in size and very, very close to each other. I was very excited to try out this physical keyboard, coming from an iPhone XS Max, which of course uses a virtual one. However, However, after spending some time with the Key 2 LE, it almost feels like I type slower on its keyboard than on the iPhones. This could be because I'm just so much more used to typing on iPhone keyboards and how different it is to type on the Key 2 LE. On its keyboard, the keys are really crowded together and essentially lack any space between them. While this is annoying, I still seem to be able to type pretty accurately, especially so thanks to the device's autocorrect and predictive text options that appear at the bottom of the screen. Another thing to keep in mind is that it requires a bit more physical effort to type on the Key 2 LE since its keys cannot simply be quickly tapped like on a virtual keyboard, but have to be pushed. However though, there's still plenty to like about the keyboard. It's got a fingerprint reader in its spacebar that's super duper speedy when it works, and well, really annoying if it doesn't, but that may just be because of my wet or sweaty hands. Plus, the keyboard gives you access to tons of customizable keyboard shortcuts. For example, you can set it up to open YouTube after holding down Y, or open the phone app after holding down P. You also get keys for starting dictation, pulling up an on-screen keyboard if you really like keyboards, and also a currency key that can be configured like a control key, giving you access to even more keyboard shortcuts like control C for copy and control Z for undo. Now, moving on from the keyboard, let's tackle the rest of the Key 2 LE's hardware. It feels super duper light, which is real refreshing, and although it does have plastic parts, it still has a real solid build about it. It charges via USB-C and has a headphone jack, plus it even has this textured back that further sets it apart from the glass-backed flagship smartphones of 2018. Unfortunately though, this does mean that the Key 2 LE doesn't support wireless charging, which is disappointing, but at least it does have compatibility with expandable micro SD card storage or compatibility with dual SIM cards. It also has dual rear cameras, coming in at 13 megapixels and 5 megapixels, although unfortunately the 5 megapixel one is only used as a depth sensor. On the front, the Key 2 LE also has an 8 megapixel selfie camera, while on the inside it's got a 3000 mAh battery, 4 gigabytes of RAM, and a Snapdragon 636 processor. Also, on its right side, it has three buttons. The volume rocker, the power button, and then the convenience key that by default is used to trigger the Google Assistant. It was a bit confusing at first for me having all these buttons on one side of the phone. For example, I kept pressing the convenience key when I meant to press the power button, but eventually I got the hang of it once I remembered that the power button is the textured one. But now, on the software side of the Key 2 LE, BlackBerry included a ton of pre-installed goodies for power users and professionals. These include a locker app, a redactor app for redacting certain parts of the screen for screenshots, a privacy shade app that blocks out all of the screen besides what you're directly looking at to make it harder for others to snoop on you over your shoulder, BlackBerry's DTAC security app, and more. Sadly though, the Key 2 LE doesn't ship with Android 9 Pie, the Outbrain system's latest version, and I have a hard time imagining how it could ever take advantage of Pi's arguably biggest feature, gesture-based navigation, since Android 8.1's navigation icons are built into the Key 2 LE's body, they're not just shown digitally on the screen. And now, speaking of that screen, it's a 1620 by 1080 pixel, 4 and a half incher, so it's pretty small by my standards. Once again, my current phone, or my daily driver as we say in the biz, is the iPhone XS Max, which has a whopping 6.5 inch screen. 
Notably enough though, these phones are very similar in footprint size, it's just that the Key 2 LE has its physical keyboard, taking up a bunch of potential screen space. Another thing that I do have to say while on the topic of the screen though, is that YouTube videos, for example, get really boxed in on the Key 2 LE, since its screen doesn't have the same 16 to 9 aspect ratio that a lot of videos have. This really stinks. But all in all though folks, what's my verdict on the BlackBerry Key 2 LE? I definitely like it because, well, it's unique. It's really like the anti-2018 phone from 2018, if that makes sense. It rejects this era's trends of glass backs, big bezel screens, and most of all, software keyboards for something that's much more almost retro, much more Blackberry-like. While I, of course, do prefer bigger screen phones with glass backs for wireless charging, aka things that aren't on this, the Key 2 LE, the Key 2 LE certainly does, though, still have its own cool features. And at the end of the day, folks, I'm definitely glad that BlackBerry came out with this guy since it's basically a cheaper Key 2, as the LE's 64GB version costs not $650 like the standard 64 gigabyte key too, but instead $200 less at a price of $450. That's definitely more my style. And with that, that'll be all for this Wear Notice review of the BlackBerry Key 2 LE. So, yup, if you enjoyed this Wear Notice video, definitely be sure to smash that subscribe button and subscribe to the Wear Notice Technology YouTube channel for more awesome technology videos just like this one. After all, I do love all my subscribers. So, if you want Big Daddy Shane's love, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and I'll love you. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for subscribing. Wear notice out with a BlackBerry Key 2 LE baby.